After nearly a month on the road, a coronavirus outbreak, home games on the road, and multiple series, the Marlins are 8-4 and four and coming home in first place. What's going on, guys? It's Ethan Madowski here, and we're going to be taking a look at the Blue Jays series uh, that the Marlins wrapped up the other night, a two-game series against the Buffalo Blue Jays. They still go by Toronto, but the series was in their AAA ballpark in Buffalo, just one of the, uh, just another Kirk of this unbelievable season that we're living in, this 2020 season, in this unbelievable 2020 year. Um, we'll take a look at the two games. It was a crazy two-game series um, that the Marlins had with a really, really insane um, second game, especially the Marlins split the series with the Blue Jays, and they come home now to face the division rival Braves for the first time since they were in Atlanta for exhibition games before the season started, just warm-up games. And that is where we may belie we believe that maybe possibly that is where the outbreak started. Nevertheless, the Marlins are finally home. I can't imagine how good it feels for them to be home. And they start a series with the Braves tonight. And um, before we get to that, we got to take a look back at what happened in Buffalo. So let's name a series MVP here. This is a guy that I've been talking about a lot. It should go as no surprise for Marlins fans. It is Jesus Aguilar. Even though he went 0-3 in the first game of the series, he followed that up with a huge night in Game 2, going 3-6 for six with four RBIs, including a big insurance run in the 10th inning of a just a wild shootout of a baseball game. Um, Jesus has been great. So far, he's hitting 311 on the year and slugging 622. Um, he's really brought some life to the Marlins, and he looks rejuvenated. He seems to be having a renaissance um, in his career, and he's getting back to the form that we've seen him in before where he is a really good major league hitter. So Jesus Aguilar is the MVP of the Marlins and Blue Jays series. Now let's dive right into game one of the series and take a look at what went on there. It was kind of a quiet night offensively for the Marlins. It wasn't their most competitive game. There were some fireworks. It ended up going to extra innings because of some late fireworks, um, but it was quiet early on for the Marlins. Eliezer Hernandez got the start, and I thought he was really solid. Um, I actually tweeted that he's a guy that can eat a lot of innings for the Marlins. He's a valuable asset because they need guys that are going to be able to eat innings for them. And he's done that. Um, he went five and a third, which is surprisingly one of the longer starts that we've seen from Marlon starting pitching recently. And that's not necessarily a positive, but he was certainly a positive on the day. He was um, pretty good, and then it all kind of blew up in his face. We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, the line looks all right. Um, he went five and a third, four hits, three runs, only one walk and five strikeouts. That's pretty good for a guy that isn't known to wreck up the strikeouts, more just an innings eater. Um, but the big problem was he gave up a three run home run to Bo Bichette, who is just a tremendous talent. He was on display all series for the Marlins. He went five for five in game two, um, you know, defense, it, it, the kid does it all. He is spectacular. Um, he's a star in the making for sure in this league, um, and he really got to the Marlins. He hit a big three-run bomb to make it um, four to one, and um, or sorry, three to one, and and that was kind of that that really that is what did Eliezer in. That was the end of his line, um, and and that was certainly a knock on his good performance. Um, the offense, like I said, was really quiet. They only had four hits. Um, but they did have a ninth inning rally, and let's talk about that ninth inning rally because it was really so far one of the bright moments of the season, even though the game ended in a loss. Um, Birdie led off the inning with a double, then they got to two outs, um, and with two outs, Brian Anderson took a huge walk. B.A., you know, the, the numbers weren't great, but he still had a great series playing, great defense, um, hit the ball around when he needed to. He hit a big, big, big home run in game two, um, just one of the farthest balls I've ever seen him hit. And then Francisco Cervelli, we've talked about him as a spark plug on this Marlins, an, un, you know, an unexpected source of energy and life into this Marlins offense. 
he steps up and hits a three-run bomb out of nowhere uh, with two outs on 3-0. and They left him a fastball up, and he said, I got the green light, and he went and got it, took it out to left center field. It was a blast. Um, you could see him. He pumped his fist as he got out. He knew he got it right away, and that was just, like I said, a really bright spot for the Marlins so far, one of the highlights of the year. It would have been nice um, for it to result in a win if it had. Um, it, it definitely, you know, would be on the highlight reel at the end of the season um, as one of the biggest wins in the Marlins season. But unfortunately, the 10th inning got the Marlins. The new rule where the runner starts on second um, really hurt hurt the Marlins. The Marlins were unable to capitalize um, some bad ABs in the 10th. They got the runner to third. Brinson was the runner. He got to third. And you have good speed out there. You know, all you got to do is put a ball in the outfield and you score the run. Um, But the Marlins were unable to do that. They were unable to get a hit um, and bring Brinson across. And then in the 10th, um, Stephen Tarpley loaded the bases, and he was unable to get out of it. And the Blue Jays walked it off. So the Marlins took a loss in Game 1 by a score of 5-4. to Um, Just making sure. Yeah, that was the final score, 5-4. to Um, In Game 2... Good Lord, what a crazy game Game 2 of this series was. Um, the Marlins jumped on Nate Pearson, who I talked about you know, at the end of the Mets series, as look out for this guy. This is, you know, this is one of the studs of Major League Pitching. This is one of the young studs. This is a possible future ace for the Blue Jays. He certainly did not look like a future ace in this one. The Marlins jumped all over him early. They made him look like a young starter. Um, just a Dirty, dirty line for Pearson. Uh, two and a third, five hits, seven runs, four walks, only one strikeout. The Marlins got out to an eight nothing lead um, off him and the uh, pitcher that came in after him. Um, and then the insanity began. So I actually missed most of this ball game because it was eight nothing. So I got on the show and started playing with the boys because I thought, all right, I'll keep up with it in case something goes wrong or whatever. And something went seriously wrong. Um, the bullpen, you know, as good as they've been, they they I've talked about how taxed they were, and it really caught up to them. Even with the off day in between the Mets and the Blue Jays series, you think, okay, maybe you know they'll be able to settle in. It was a really really tough night for the pen, and it was a tough night for uh, Yams um, as well. But here's let's take a look at what the insanity looked like because it was really crazy. And I didn't even know how crazy it was until I just looked at the game cast um, before this as I was preparing for this video and saw what the game went like. So it was eight to nothing. And then Teoscar Hernandez hit a, ho- a two run home run and Rowdy Telez hit a two run home run. So now it's eight to four. Then the Marlins. Um, let me see what inning this was in. One sec. Sorry. The Marlins get some back. So in it was 8 nothing in the third inning. And then in the bottom of the third, the Jays hit the first two-run home run. Then in the bottom of the fourth, the, the Jays hit their second two-run home run. So now it's 8-4. to four. Then in the fifth, the Marlins make it 11-4 to four with um, RBI singles from Jonathan VR and Jesus Aguilar, who we talked about had a huge game too. So that's the top of the fifth. In the bottom of the fifth, Travis Shaw hits a two-run home run. Now it's 11-6. to six. That's the, remember, in the fifth inning. Then in the sixth inning, Jansen hits a two-run home run. Now it's 11-8. to eight. All of a sudden, the Jays are creeping back into this, and I'm checking, and I'm saying, oh, oh God, what are the Marlins doing? Um, as I'm playing the show, I'm talking with some buddies, and my buddies keep updating me. It's 11-7. to seven, It's 11-8. Anyway, so now it's eleven to eight in the sixth. Then Vladdy Jr. in the top in the bottom of the seventh hits a home run. It's eleven to nine. And you see the young firepower for the Blue Jays. But they weren't done with that young firepower. Here comes Bo Bichette in the eighth inning. Bo was five for five on the night. The dude was just ridiculous in this series. I mean, just unbelievable. You see the kind of talent he has. You see the ability to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, I think he hit two home runs in this series. He is just tremendous. Um, I, I, I'm obsessed with him. Uh, I, I fanboy over Boba shit. I was fanboying over him even as he was killing the Marlins. He's just a tremendous talent. Anyway, it's 11 to 10. He, or it's 11 to nine. He hits a home run, makes it 11 to 10. Then Travis Shaw hits his second home run of the game in the eighth inning. And it's 11 to 11 out of nowhere. It's a tie ball game. Unbelievable. 
just absolute madness. I don't know what got into the Blue Jays, but they hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven home runs um, by my count. Just, just madness. They've got a ton of firepower in that lineup. Don't get me wrong. But maybe it was the minor league ballpark. Maybe we're going to see this type of stuff from the Jays. But just craziness. So after that, both teams kept it scoreless in the ninth. And then in the 10th, in the, the Marlins got guys to second to third. And Magnor Sierra, who I've talked about, has been actually really productive for the Marlins and pretty good. Um, he hit a two RBI single to make it 13 to 11. Jesus Aguilar added one making it 14 to 11 so the Marlins were able to get to to survive all of that ride that wave as we've all been seeing them do and talk about riding that wave um, they were able to survive that however it happened and then Josh A Smith came in in the 10th shut it down with two strikeouts and the Marlins escaped with a victory. So after being up eight to nothing, the Blue Jays come all the way back on the Marlins, um, make it seem like everything's going crazy. I'm looking at the win probability chart right now. The Marlins were at like 84%, and then all of a sudden they were at the Blue Jays had the probability at 60 something percent. It just went up and down. What a crazy ball game that was. It was really fun to watch. I did end up tuning back in. Don't worry, I saw the end of it, and uh, it was truly crazy. The negatives for the Marlins. I mean, the, bat, the the pitching was just terrible in this game. Yams was not good. He let up seven hits and four runs, walked two, struck out. I mean, he struck out five and three and a third. That's about the only bright spot. Um, but he's got to be a lot better. And then the bullpen. <laughs> Yikes. I mean, this line is just terrible. Six and two thirds, 11 hits and seven runs. They did strike out seven, but that just, you can't do that. You can't do that. I ha- there's nothing else to say. There's no other analysis needed. You cannot have your bullpen let up 11 hits and 7 runs when you're up 8 nothing. It's inexcusable. Just completely inexcusable from the Marlins bullpen. I understand that it's makeshift um, and it caught up to us, but it's uh, no matter what the circumstances, it's just completely inexcusable. Nevertheless, the Marlins get out of Buffalo with a split, and most importantly, they come home to their families, um, to Miami, to their homes, and and just uh, you got to feel so good for them that they finally made it back home, and I'm happy to see the Marlins. I can't wait to see them back in Marlins Park for the first time this year, believe it or not. Let's report, before we um, get to the Brave series, let's report some good news here, COVID-related, talk about getting home. Sandy Alcantara, the first player we have known of that has gotten his two negative tests he has returned to his family Um, now he needs to be evaluated he needs a physical and we just got to close our eyes and hold our breath and pray here for this one that nothing is oh you know sandy has suffered no long-term effects from this horrible disease um and and that he'll be back with the marlins soon once he's cleared he'll return to the alternate jupiter site i imagine He'll throw a start there or two, so it could be some time before we see him back in the bigs. But Sandy Alcantara has had his two negative tests. He is able to return to his family. As we know more about who tests negative, we, um, you know, I'll share that information, um, you know, after this Brave series. Maybe if we find out during this Brave series more. But so far, that is the first one. Let's take a look at this Brave series real quickly for the Marlins. There's not much to look at because there's, as it the same way it's been, you know, throughout this year so far, the Marlins don't know who's pitching. Um, So we know who's pitching for the first game tonight. It's going to be Pablo. He's going up against the young stud, Kyle Wright, who has struggled so far, um, but the Braves are very high on him. Then um, on Saturday, it's Max Freed versus we don't know. And then neither team has announced a starter for Sunday. So it's an interesting series against the Braves here. It's a battle for first place in the NL East. Time for the Marlins to see how they match up against their strongest division opponent as they finally make it back to Marlins Park.